are continuing uphill. They're widening and cleaning the line as they go. Still working with the, just the topsoil. One dozer, front dozer is pioneering. Second dozer is cleaning. Third dozer coming in. Make the final finishing touches to it. His objective is to clean up anything that's left over and to make sure that the line will hold. Two blade line coming downhill, two blade width. The dozers will push the material to left and right continue to clean it. Third dozer in the rear will come up and take up any cleanup that's necessary to, to make the line secure. The downhill push is fairly easy to do other than the massive amount of material that's accumulated sometimes makes it hard to disperse it and keep it clear of the fire burning area. Slides going down. <laughs> Two dozers coming down. He'll now are doing the final cleanup, making sure that the line is down to mineral and that the uh, line is going to be secure. Anything that's left over, they'll move out, push over to the edges. The one blade tipped in the corner down, you see the half blade full, and he's making sure that he's getting a good clean cut into the side. This is a cleanup operation. Okay. Should have a nice clean hillside there. because of the amount of material we have to move. We'll continue to push uphill and then start breaking over here in a minute. Maybe taking a look at the possibility of putting a safety island in due to the heavy fuels in this area. area. We're going to 
continue to put their safety iron in. We're taking down the mineral soil so that the material won't have a flash over burn. We have a chimney on both sides that we're working on. This safety iron is going to be completely cleared of material. We're going to go down to the mineral soil so that if we run into a problem with a dozer, of having a flash over in fuel, you'll have a place to move out into an area in part. The uh, material will be completely pushed downhill and back. We're going to move the two dozers working together here. 3440 in the military. They're going to push downhill in here to clean this area off, working together. have communications, which is a military dozer. Well, okay. Communications are very important in this type of operation because the only way he can communicate is by hand signals, so he has to be very aware of what's going on and the people around him. The other people are kicking rocks down and rolling down the hill. Well, if he's not aware of it, he can't hear it on the radio, so he's got to be, keep his, his eyes and ears open. What's happening around him? percentage grade as you can see is very steep material very loose sandy material however the last dozer that came down cleaned it sufficiently that he could get traction for the rest of the dozer so they could make it back up they heavy rock outcropping area the lower dozer is having trouble getting up to where the upper dozer is they're pushing dirt around pushing it down over the boulders so that he can get some traction on it. The boulders that you see outcropping, the large ones, he gets the track up on and he can't move. He loses maneuverability, he can't climb over them. So the upper dozer will attempt to get as much dirt as possible and push down and cover the heavy rock outcroppings. boulder rolling down the hill. That's very typical of what happens in this type of terrain. 
that type of terrain, this boulder's rolling down like that, takes out people and equipment. It's the one that rolled down the hill on it. You can see by the size of it, very large. The bulldozer coming down beside it. The rock is about five feet high, about seven feet wide, probably weighs in a neighborhood of two or three tons. This type of rock to take out a piece of equipment like this bulldozer, catching it in the side or in the canopy and injuring the people or personnel that work in the general area of it. The rock is uncontrollable after you push it with a dozer. get the middle dozer can't get out we're gonna have to move up to the upper dozer 3430 and hook on to that dozer and try and get all of them out that's why we have the one dozer left up high as a safety dozer in this situation down to get in position. They run his cable down. The other two dozers are now stuck. Front dozer will run his cable down and hook onto the middle one, and all three of them will try and come out of together. Dozer's moving up, pulling the cable up tight to get a good position so that he can pull the second dozer. The second bulldozer, or middle bulldozer, is hooked to the third one also with a winch line. The two lower dozers are stuck. They can't get over a rock outcropping. It's important that nobody is standing near the cables when this type of operation is taking place because if the cable snaps, the cables can spin out to the left or right and take and hit people. They've been known to cut people in half. Now we're pulling the bottom dozers pulling out, pulling each other. This is a daisy chain operation that takes place sometimes in very loose terrain, such as you see here. Safety is very important and coordination between operators is very important. on the line, the dozer has to pass by this hose. Situation being that the hose will have to be lifted and carried over top of the bulldozer, lifted up over top of it. If the bulldozer goes across the hose, it has a very good possibility of cutting it. So with the firefighting operations, we can't shut the water off and, just, and remove the coupling, remove the hose from the area. So what we're gonna do is lift the hose up over top of the dozer, standard procedure in wildland firefighting. <laughs> the doing is lifting the 
hose up in the air, trying to clear the dozer with it. The dozer continues downhill, hose is put up. This has to be a coordinated effort with safeties involved here, a lot of safety area because they're walking up on tracks and area of the bulldozer that are moving. If the dozer starts to move, it can grab a hold of one of the personnel. You see the hose slides back over the dozer. They don't drive over it. used for firefighting. The bulldozer operator comes up, picks up some dirt, moves the dirt over, and attempts to cover the hose to a point that he can get his tracks over without damaging the fire hose. some directions from the firefighters on the sides. Hose is covered. He can continue over the hose. Continue on his way. He's building an area for safety. In case you're overrun by fire, he has to dig a trench with the bulldozer. He's in the middle of a safety zone. Run the dozer back and forth. See that he's tilt the blade down, putting in a trench. He needs a deep trench in order that he's going to do, build it up so that he can get his dozer in it, so that he can get off the dozer and get into the trench underneath the dozer. It's important that he digs down, deep, continues moving so that the dozer leaves a hole underneath of it that he can get into. Drops the blade, has a trench and heavy dirt material on the downside of it. The dozer operator locks his brakes, takes his helmet off, throttles his dozer up, rolls his seat forward. The seat forward indicates that he has exited the dozer and that there's an operator clear of it. All those operators understand that if they see a dozer with the seat forward, but they need to look for the operator. He then clears the dozer and prepares to go under it. Okay, now he comes in the rear of the dozer, throws his fire blanket out that's on the dozer, and goes underneath the dozer with it. He gets underneath the dozer, he covers himself with that blanket. fire passes over him. The dozer will protect him because of all the sheet metal and the iron. Fire would be coming up from the front of the dozer. The dozer is pointed towards the fire and on an angle. The lower side of that dozer is towards the fire and the berm that he's put on the lower side of the dozer is angled towards the fire. And that's his protection is the dirt, the track, and the side of the dozer. After putting dozer lines in, it's important that we put in water bars to help them stabilize the soil and for erosion control. Sometimes when they're operating on a fire line, if we have time, we'll put in water bars as we go or after we come back, we'll put in water bars. The idea of the water bars, you see, is to position it so the water goes off down the hill controlled. Some soils make it difficult to put in. However, most of the time, if they're put in correctly, such as this, with an open throat, the lower end has to be opened up, which is called the throat. With that throat open, we can continue to control the water. The distance between them on very steep ground is approximately 50 feet between water bars. On ground that is a very low grade, or a low percentage of grade, we can then put water bars at 150 feet. It's important that we put them in and put them in correctly with an open throat. 
Back dragging back to get the water to flow into it, if at all possible. Putting an upper water bar in, same position, moving it over, cutting down, shutting the water off. Shutting the water off to the left. You see, turn, cutting, cutting the material, lifting the blade, and then he runs out to keep the throat open. That lower end is important to be open. If that throat is closed, the water can't flow out. Clear out, track breaks over, shows us the dose. It moves back up the hill and we'll swing around. Clean it out. Again, he lifts his blade. He's out shutting the water downhill on an angle. Open the throat up so the water will flow out right in that point. <laughs>